Hello everybody and welcome to Tree Week 2021. This video is produced by the community of Carndonna and it's all about trees, trees around Inishowen. There are foresters explaining the history of trees in Inishowen and some of the planting that's taken place today. There's farmers showing the contribution that trees can do to our own farming and there's beekeepers in it, as well as a whole load of members of Inishowen community, of Carndonna community and some of the tree planting that they have done. So enjoy this video, get yourself a cup of tea, sit back, relax, and afterwards, don't forget to plant a tree. Uh, my name's Ross Buchanan, and uh, I'm a forester here in Donegal, and right now we're standing in a pretty good example of, um, of an ancient oak habitat. Uh, this is, uh, to give it the scientific name, it's Querco Alex Bletchenham Woodland. So it's Annex 1 habitat. It's internationally important habitat. Uh, once upon a time, a lot of Ireland was covered with it. And now we're down to a very, very low percentage, most of which is really not in good condition. But it's um, essentially, it's habitat dominated by oak, but with elements of uh, holly, birch, hazel. Um, and the reason that it's of such international importance is that it's got a very rich assemblage of um, like you know lichens and liverworts so mosses etc bryophytes essentially um the uh, it's a kind of a classical example of what we call celtic rainforest and you find it along the west of ireland up into the west of scotland even in wales and uh, as i say it's of international importance after the last ice age what was in a showing like? It was a very bare place because it had been scoured by the ice and there was nothing there. Just rock and crumbled, um, eroded stone. So after the ice age you had trees coming in from the continent and recolonizing the island. So first of all you had you had the Scots pine and the birch that came here. And then next you had some of the broad leaves coming after it. Uh, you had the oak and the elm that came in, colonised the more fertile areas and took over from Scots pine. And Scots pine was pushed out to the more extreme fringes, the upland areas and so forth. And about 3000 BC, the climate started to change. Um, the area became wetter and colder. And that extra moisture and the coolness meant that um, vegetation stopped breaking down in the upland areas and started to, to form layers of peat and the, the peat built up and the Scots pine was was killed off as the peat layers rose and so we've got huge areas that had been pine forest that are now um, mummified as it were under under the peat and here the peat's been removed uh, for turf production and we're getting glimpses of this great pine forest that once covered the uplands of Inishowen. and it, it, It's something that would have been very similar to the pine woods you would find today in Scotland, the Caledonian pine forest. So upon a time these hills around Inishowen were, were just a vast Scots pine forest. Um, so as I say once a very important native Irish tree but 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 long gone and now all we've got is a a snapshot hidden under the bog. So um, my name is Patrick McCartney here and I have um, a small farm, it's my grandfather's farm, and it's six and a half acres. So I decided way back about four years ago to look into uh, forestry. So there was a lovely uh, deal going from the, forest, uh, the foresters, they, uh, so I contacted them and they said, uh, you know, I said come down and look, is it uh, uh, suitable for a nat native woodland, oak woodland. So they came down and they said yes it was. So then I approached a, a local forester and he says yep yeah, he would do the, the job for me. So uh, we went on with it then and uh, got our uh, things all together and we planted out there last year four and a half acres just under four and a half acres of native Irish woodland with oak being the, the main tree that you want in. So we did that. And the great thing about it, it was very lucrative in a way. It was very good because they supplied all the trees free. The forester work was paid for. 
and then subsequent years after that he would maintain it and then a little bit of fencing was in the deal as well and then on top of that then was a, a yearly fee which is good for the forest to look after it for 15 years so uh, everything about it was very good and it's all taken care of with uh, the grants so that was a lovely start And I find that the more they know about things, the more that they care about it. And then um, they will hopefully pass down that love for future generations. Else, do you want to tell us a little bit about what we learned this week about the hazel? Okay. Um, well, these guys turn into the male. The male. These are the males here, yeah. The males. And the females will turn into these guys. Okay. Little red flowers, right? We yeah. don't have any on that branch there, but that's right. And then we looked it up in our nature, uh, our book, and we start, we identify. So we learn about the catkins and the little female, um, the buds, and then we draw pictures of what we find. Well, the woodlands mean a lot to me because I love playing in the trees and because sometimes I see squirrels and I love the birds when they sing their songs and all that stuff. It's just lovely because then you can see stuff on the ground like little beetles and sometimes you can see little worms coming up, sticking their heads up from the surface. And then there's also nice types of birds you can see. Like sometimes there could be hawks. Sometimes there could be bluebirds. You know, there can be quite rare type of birds, but sometimes I think in different countries, when I see trees getting chopped down, I think it's not ni nice. I mean, like, who would want to chop down thing animals' habitats? Because the woods are the best things ever because there's habitats in it. I mean, there could be owls hiding in hollow trees and nobody would know it, and there could be bees as well. Hello, my name is Abdul and I am from Syria and I was living here for three and a half years. And I, I want to talk about uh, that how, why we, we need to plant the trees. So I am a beekeeper and I have my bees, my beehives here, you know, see here. So all made from the wood. So we need to focus about our nature, we need to plant as we can trees uh, because the trees is our long, our long, you know. Trees, you know, the flower, the trees, the flowers, and every, you know, wild trees, the bees using it as taking a pollen from it and using it to make honey and uh, to feed the small bees. So if we look at the trees and we keep working, planting will be good for us. And the bees can work as well for us, like to pollination, flowers, vegetables, trees, whatever. So we need to keep, we need to focus about our nature, our environment, and thank you so much. What we've got here is uh, kind of a more familiar site in the Irish landscape and it's what we as utilitarian humans use for the production of, of, of timber. So what we've got here is uh, Sitka spruce, Pisces achensis, uh, an, an individual tree species that's not native to Ireland, but rather is native to the Pacific Northwest of America. Now, um, in Europe, uh, we had a succession of ice ages that pushed species south and brought them north again. And if we ever had an equivalent species here in Ireland, it was probably lost during the, the interglacial period. So as a human society, we need to use timber. We're obliged to use timber and we should use timber. It's at A, it's captured carbon. B, it um, it's, can be used for building instead of really carbon expensive products. I suppose such as cement, steel, plastics, etc., that are very carbon expensive to produce. So it's a fantastic alternative that we 
need to get better at engineering and, and using. Um, and I suppose uh, as the population grows, we need more and more timber, and it's important to to realise that you know that t timber is, is an essential resource. Sitka spruce is managed pretty much um, as a horticultural crop. You know, as we grow barley or as we grow wheat. Uh, whereas instead of having a, a clear fell every year as we do with barley and wheat, it's it's once every 40 years or so to, pr to produce timber for, for use in society. Uh, within the plantation itself, it's pretty limited what's going on biodiversity wise under the canopy, but there's quite a lot of birds active in the canopy uh, and squirrels. Uh, when you're Planting woodland for timber production, you have to set aside at least 15% for biodiversity um, under current grant conditions. So you have to leave open space, you have to plant at least 10% of the planted area with native trees as well. You have to set back from any aquatic zones to ensure they're protected. And uh, so <clears throat> those those that 15% within a plantation actually serves a, gr a great purpose in that there's no um, there's no grazers within a woodland unless of course we have deer coming in so those little pockets are free from grazing pressure that happens on the typical open hill landscape here in Ireland we're now standing in a managed oak wood this has been planted with a mixture of oak scotch pine and then some European larch as well uh, so what we're talking about here is basically managing native trees for a timber resource and it, it's, it's a great thing to be doing. Um, we're, however, we are talking about managing trees on a rotation of like 100 plus years really to produce timber for society. So we have to realise that it's going to be slow. Uh, there's a lot of work involved with using native trees for timber, for instance in this particular stand. I've been in here three or four times now shaping the oak in order to keep them growing straight because unlike a, a conifer tree they'll tend to grow more bushy if left to their own devices. The idea here is that uh, you gradually remove the larch, you gradually remove the scots pine. They're in as kind of nurse species to help the oak develop, to help it grow upwards and to keep it contained and then we take those out. Uh, so in here what we've done is we've marked the better trees with orange tape that we're going to retain and we're going to we're going to focus the growth on these guys so we we cut out their competitors that aren't doing as well and uh, as they get more space for growing they'll they'll expand and put on more timber and while managing native trees and using them for timber is super important it has to be understood that it takes a long long time and it takes an awful lot of work, manual intervention, for it to happen. So we have to be conscious of that as a society as well. We're here today on James Breslin's demonstration farm for an Upland's Uplands European Innovation Partnership project. Uh, agroforestry is a huge part of our project. And what we have done on James's farm is look to see where we can incorporate trees that will complement the ex existing livestock on the farm. We don't necessarily want to replace livestock with trees, but we know that trees and agroforestry will have a huge value for the animals on James's farm in terms of shelter, in terms of biodiversity, in terms of lengthening the grazing season. And we're very excited about what we're doing here. We feel that every farm has a place for trees and we, we just need to develop a mechanism to allow farmers to do this without actually being penalised for doing it. Uh, so we're planting trees here in wet areas, in dry areas, in riparian zones, in areas for shelter, in areas to protect water courses. So th there's a huge variety of what we're actually able to do and hopefully we'll develop this into a mechanism that can be used by all farmers to plant more trees in the future. Right, my name is James Bresson here. This is my farm. We're up here in Redcastle. We're creating a green barn. I'm on the EIP. I'm setting a few trees here. Hazel, birch, oak, round tree, just native 
woodland trees and I'm just trying to get a bit of shelter for my animals you know and this here there's tree guards going around them so that the animals can run around them all the time you having to close them off they can graze all year round and we're doing this as a trial to see how it works okay Hi, my name is Shauna McClenaghan, Joint CEO of Inishown Development Partnership. We in IDP have been involved in a variety of projects over the past few years that support awareness raising and actions on biodiversity and sustainable development. This includes our Thinking Trees series, which was worked with primary schools across Inishown. This was supported by Concern. Also working with Carindona Community School and the students there, we planted fruit trees and provided bees, creating a small apiary there. Working with Barrack Hill Community Garden, we had an espalier workshop and we also were involved in tree planting there. Under our Changemakers Seeds for Change programme, we provided funding to groups such as Artlink at Fort Dunry for their tiny forest project. We worked with Scalisagon in their walled garden with tree planting and workshops. Our new Wellbeing from Nature project offers further opportunities to develop some of the projects just like this. And of course, we're delighted to be involved with the Eco Car Network, which has gone from strength to strength. All of these projects send a clear message that we should not take our biodiversity for granted, that we all have a part to play in addressing the challenges of biodiversity loss and climate change. To raise awareness and action, we can all make a difference both as individuals and as communities working together. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Trish Murphy. I'm the project officer with the Inishowen Rivers Trust. Um, over the last five years, the Trust has distributed free trees to landowners and, and other people around Inishowen, anyone who has a bit of space that they'd like to plant a tree in. Um, Here's some trees that have arrived this year from trees on the land. These are alder. Now alder is a very good tree to plant next to a river because alders don't mind getting their roots wet. Um, other trees that you might plant by a river would be downy birch and willow is a great one as well. Now of course if you do plant um, trees by a river then it's very important that you manage them well. As, so um, don't leave them um, go for years, make sure that you crop them back in time and maintain them. This prevents debris from getting into the rivers and clogging up at culverts and bridges. So over the last five years, we've distributed over 3000 trees to the people in Inishown and these trees have been mostly planted by our volunteers as well. So we'd like to say a big shout out to all our volunteers who love their tree planting and happy tree week, everyone. This tree planting occurred under the former principal, Mr. Paul Fiorentini, who is way ahead of his time in terms of retaining and extending the native biodiversity of the school campus. In 2004, CCS had a project with a section of Donegal County Council, which saw us plant approximately 3,000 trees across the perimeter of the school. The purpose was to create a forest walk, encourage wildlife, establish a shelter belt for the more exposed parts of the campus, and give the pupils an appreciation for the wonder and godger of trees. We concentrated on the native species of oak, birch, beech, ash, alder, rowan and a small number of Scots pine for an evergreen effect. The trees were planted by the pupils under the supervision of Mr Jennings and Pat O'Connor. Most of these trees are very well established but are not evident when driving past the front of the school but can be seen from higher vantage points such as the town church or from the opposite bank of the river. However, a distinct corpse of trees, mainly birch, is thriving on the land nearest to the Donna Cross. We also planted beech trees at the front of the school to continue the line of majestic beech trees outside the math building and unit four. But some of these did not succeed in the very damp soil there and have since been replaced by aspens, which are doing very well. We also planted some distinctive white birch outside the Aris above the car park. The most recent planting was in the Memorial Garden where there are a number of distinctive young trees, including some Italian alder and oak. 
It is hoped to plant a small stock of native ash in the coming weeks. Hi, my name is Sinead Smith. I represent the Forest of Carnduna, which is a local initiative led by a team of dedicated volunteers planting trees in gardens and school grounds across the Nishon. Uh, we're standing at the entrance to the Barley Hill Park and uh, this is the main entrance it's on, on the Baldusky Road. And as you can see into the right here, uh, we have a nice new area. Uh, it's all been landscaped uh, and a number of uh, trees. These are three birch trees that were planted in the Barrick Hill Town Park last October. Last year we planted 400 trees, native species, in local schools, including St. Patrick's Boys School, St. Patrick's Girls School, Dona National School, Craigtown, Rashini, Glen Toher, Glassels, Mallantown and Kildare. These are our community orchard uh, fruit trees. We got two pears, two, um, one apple, two apple trees and one plum tree from the tree council. They're, they're mainly native Irish trees. Uh, there would be rowan trees, uh, mountain ash, asper, and a variety of others. And we set another five trees from the tree council, a fruit trees at the bottom of this area of planting. So we're very proud to be able to work together to increase biodiversity locally with planting native trees and to uh, reduce our carbon footprint wherever we can.